We've modeled and animated our butterfly, and then created snapshots, and saved the snapshots in their own scene file. Now we're ready to create a particle system so that we can instance the geometry. I'll start by making a new scene file. File New Scene. I want to check my grid settings. Currently I've got a grid that's 15 units from center to edge. If you're seeing something different in your view, you might want to go into Display Grid Options and set them something like this. This would be about the size of the swarm of butterflies. So I've got a length of 15, grid lines of 10, and subdivisions of 10. Remember that our butterflies are about 3 units in length, or about 3 centimeters long. I'm going to create the particles, so I'll go now to the Dynamics menu set, to the Particles menu, in the Particle Tool Options. Here in the Tool Settings, I want to increase the number of particles to about 20 or so. That'll be the number of particles that will be created when I click in the viewport. The maximum radius is the size of the cluster of particles. So I've got currently a grid with a radius of 15, so I'll turn the maximum radius up here to about the same amount. And then just simply click once at the origin, and I get a cluster of 20 particles. I'll press the Enter key to complete the operation. Close the tool settings. And if I tumble around in the view, you can see we've got a cluster of a bunch of particles, 20 to be exact. To make them a little bit easier to see, I'll just go into the channel box or attribute editor and set the render type to spheres. We won't actually see these spheres when we render because they're hardware spheres and we'll be rendering our instance geometry in Maya software. I'm ready to import the snapshots now, so I'll go to the File menu and choose Import, but I need to go into the Option box for Import, because there's one little snag in this situation, which is if I take the default import options, then the objects that are imported will have a colon in their name, and the instancer doesn't like that. So I can fix it by simply turning off this switch in the import options. If I turn use namespaces off, then I won't see those colon characters in my object names. Go to import. I'll choose butterfly snapshots. Click the import button. And now I've got some snapshots in my view. All those models are there. I want to go to the outliner, window outliner, and check to see that there are no colon characters in any of these. And so it's looking pretty good. I'm ready to place these snapshots onto the particles. I want to select the objects and not the particles. And in fact, all I really need to select are the roots. In other words, I only really need to select the body of each butterfly. In the Dynamics menu set, I want to go to the Particles menu and choose Instancer Replacement. And I'll go to the Options for that. It's very important that in this option box, you see the names of all of the objects, the body snap objects, in this field. And that you see Particle Shape 1 listed down here under Particle Object to Instance. So Maya automatically detected that this particle shape node existed in the scene and plugged that in for us. So once again, do not select the particles when you issue this menu command. We do not want to see particle shape 1 listed here under instance objects, because then you'd be instancing the particle system to itself. In the particle instancer options, we want to change the cycle type to sequential, and that way we'll cycle through each one of these objects. And they'll cycle by frames, as you can see here. Cycle step units are frames. If I scroll down into the options, there's one handy option that I can set now, which I could also set later in the particle shape node. But I'll just take the opportunity to set it now, which is the aim direction. I'll set to velocity, so that when these start moving, they'll point in the right direction. They'll point in the direction that they're moving. 
Down at the bottom, it's very important that we also choose the cycle start object as particle ID. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that each one of these instances starts on a different frame or starts on a different model in our model sequence so that they're not all flapping their wings at the same time. Cool, so I'll click Create. And now I see instance geometry in my viewport. So let me close my outliner and dolly back. I'll press the 5 key so we can see a little bit better. I've only got 24 frames in my timeline, so let me extend that to, let's say, 120 frames. Press play. And I've got flapping wings on butterflies. All right. We are seeing the particles themselves now as these spheres. And we are seeing the original object here, too. So we want to at least hide the original object. So I can create a display layer just to hide those. I could also delete them, but I'm just going to keep them around just in case. So I'll go back to the outliner. Select the original snapshot objects, not the instancer. So this object here, this node, is all of the geometry that we see on the particles. And then these are all the originals. So those are the snapshots. Okay, so I'll go over here and create a new layer. And I'll rename it, and I'll call it Snapshots Layer. And then I can just hide it. All right, so we've got butterflies flapping their wings. I'll go ahead and save what I have. File Save Scene As. And this is going to be Butterfly Animated 01. Click Save As.